Hey, Snackers, this is Kareem Skander. Hey, everyone, Matt Napoli here. Welcome to episode 173 of Snack Minute. This week is a continuation on the uh, cool mentor, uh, actually, AI bot oh, Hank had showed us last uh, a few weeks ago. You guys didn't see this yet, but there's actually some really, like, even cooler things uh, that Hank got into. Um, and we were like, you know what? Let's take a break here and let's do a whole nother episode. So he asked Hank to come back and show us the really, really cool stuff that he's been working on on his CCNA mentor bot. So... Um, Hank, if you don't mind introducing yourself for the new snackers, if there are any, and then we'll jump right into it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Kareem, for having me back. So Hank Preston, I'm a principal engineer here in learning and certifications. And I have uh, I've been at Cisco for about 14, 15 years and about eight to I don't know, eight to 10 years ago, I dove pretty hard into kind of network automation, net DevOps, kind of the whole DevNet space. And I have been kind of continually playing in that space. And that has taken us like everybody else in the world, figuring out how AI factors in. So I'm excited to come back and talk a little bit about some of my early experimentation with AI with my fun little CCNA mentor bot. Oh, so, Hank, last time you showed us um, how we could leverage your C uh, CCNA mentor bot to kind of help us study and figure out the path of learning for the CCNA certification, uh, asking questions, having to ask you questions, um, that kind of stuff. And it was all really cool. And then the one thing that, that we unfortunately didn't have time for was you dug into um, the fact that we can kind of maybe do some lab work as well with uh, Cisco Modding Labs. Um, can, you, can you give us a little background on that and then maybe dive into a demo? Yeah, absolutely. So we, as we, we went through it, like there's a lot that you have to know to be a CCNA and earn your CCNA certification. There's a lot of facts you need to know, new terminology if you're new to the world of networking. And the, we talked a lot about that in the last video. But a huge part of getting into the networking industry and earning your CCNA is being able to practice some really important hands-on networking skills. And I didn't want to leave that as a gap from the CCNA mentor piece. And so that was another use case. That, uh, that CCNA Mentor can be leveraged for. So let's let's kind of experiment and see what that looks like. So we're back up here. I've got my that same CCNA Snack Minute Mentor conversation we've been having. And so let's say I've been having this conversation. We've gone back. It looks like we left off here with some kind of multiple choice questions that are in place. And I wanted to do some hands-on kind of preparation and practice. So I could say, hey, at CCNA, I'd like to practice some hands-on uh, ether channel skills. Can you give me a lab? And so as we've seen it before, he's going to go ahead and process that. It's going to remember any context that might have been in the place to go through here. And it says, oh, I get some nice, nice information's coming back from me. So we're actually going to see kind of a couple of aspects of this hands-on practice that goes in. And so I asked for a lab and so, oh, well, CCNA mentioned that, well, I can set up a hosted lab for you. So maybe you don't have access to kind of a place to practice these skills. And so Cisco U, our learning platform here at Learning and Certifications, can offer that. So it says, hey, do you want me to create up a lab for you? And assumes you want one and says, OK, I've created a new hosted lab for you. Once it's ready, we'll set it up and here we go. And so I can go ahead and hit this link to access the lab. I'll slide over here to my browser window a little bit so we can see what's in there. So the credentials are provided. I'll go ahead and log in. This is awesome. All I right. don't have to go looking for the lab. I don't have to figure out if it's the right <clears throat> lab. This is this is great. <laughs> yep. So this direct kind of tie-in between what we're doing with the, the CCNA mentor bot as well as kind of our CML infrastructure. So I've got a lab, but there's there's no content. Um, I didn't get that ether channel thing I was after, but I come back and say, thanks. How about a practice exercise? Oops. Exercise for ether channel configuration. So this is gonna gets back to what I'm after. I want that hands-on practice. I want to get kind of like super deep in with what's going through. Ooh, I keep forgetting I got a tag CCNA mentor when yep. I'm in this group chat yeah. with you guys. <laughs> Thanks. How about a practice exercise for ether channel configuration? And that tagging, that's just a, a nature of kind of how WebEx bots work, right? From a security yeah. perspective, they're only set up in a group room. So that's not unique to my bot here. It's kind of enabling them to go through. All right. So it comes through and kind of gives me this scenario that's in place. Sure. Here's your practice exercise for Ether channel. You've got two switches. Requirements go through. And then look at that. I also get a pop-up. A CML topology to study this scenario has been imported into your hosted lab environment. So if I kind of Shut scroll up. back over here, sure enough, there it is. There's my Ether channel book. <laughs> um, lab. I'll go ahead and click on this one. You can see it opens up and kind of the same description that was in WebEx is embedded in the guide view that CML has. And so it says, here's your scenario, two switches, go ahead and use your ports. I'll hide the guide and then I'll 
kind of zoom in a little bit. There's my switches. And I can immediately kind of go ahead and start up this lab <clears throat> and then start accessing these and kind of doing that configuration that that was described inside of the lab exercise. And so very quick and easy to kind of jump back in what you're after and get that practice. And so what I really hey, like about this, oh, yeah, go ahead, Kareem. So this is really valuable as, as somebody that always struggles to find uh, sandboxes, equipment to uh, just practice on and against some of the blueprint topics. This is super, super valuable. Two things. I want to drill into a little bit into the tech and how you implemented this. I also want to make sure that our snackers know that we're just teasing you right now. All of this <laughs> is only available internally uh, for us to access at Cisco. Um, we are working on a release plan and we will have this app to you so you can start playing with it. But for now, just look at how cool it is. Um, so <laughs> Hank, just from a technology perspective, can you walk us through like what have you done with all the APIs around this? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of components that go into this. And that was one of the things I wanted to do when I worked on this prototype as a learning exercise. And thanks for reminding the audience for that. We did go through that in detail in the first episode. Let's hit that hard. I don't want everybody watching this and, and jumping in and being disappointed. We do want this to come out production, but it's not there. Um, so the components that make up the CCNA Mentor, it's built on top of a generative AI for the conversational aspects for interaction. Um, and so specifically, Cisco has an internal um, version of ChatGPT that we leverage, we call it Bridge IT, that provides kind of a, um, a secure and safe version of a generative AI that meets all of Cisco's intellectual property, security concerns, reliability. Um, hopefully, if, if your organizations out there are looking at, uh, at Gen AI, you've got similar kind of AI best practices and um, what do we call it? There's a term we've got here at Cisco. I, I want to keep saying reliable AI, but it's not. Responsible AI? Responsible AI practices. Reliable would be good too. <laughs> I'll take responsibility over reliability for something like this because I'm excited about AI, but I'm, there's still, I got a ton of questions myself. Yeah. Maybe another snack minute on that. <laughs> and so this is built first and foremost on top of Bridge IT to give me the generative AI capabilities. But there's a lot of moving pieces in this area. Um, I've been doing the automation space and the DevNet space forever. So my experience with building WebEx bots was a foundational element for this. And so I built this the same way that I started building bots years ago to tell Chuck Norris jokes, right? That was my first entree into or entry into uh, WebEx bot creation were like joke bots. And so it's built on that. It's written in Python, right? I Dockerized this. Um, the bot runs as a container inside of a Kubernetes cluster that's hosted um, by our platforms team here in learning and certifications. And then for the lab backend, right? So how does how does the WebEx bot, the CCA mentor, talk and offer me a CML lab? It mentions it in here. It's coming from Cisco U. So the if you've ever taken a um, a training class from Cisco U that had hands-on lab exercises, right? That data center, that lab platform, we internally uh, kind of, it's called VM cloud inside of ours because it's it's primarily a virtual, but also has some hardware pieces in there. And so I'm asking, right, using Python and API skills, I'm asking the VM cloud platform to give me a CML lab environment and assign it to whichever user that the, C the CCNA mentor is talking to. The, so on behalf of you, the CCNA mentor tool is going out and provisioning you a CML based lab and assigning it to you setting up all of the timing and all the stuff we need to do for our labs in the back end. And then the piece where it creates the dynamic um, kind of lab that's here is a combination of kind of traditional templating skills in Python to understand what's being asked okay. for, as well as leveraging the CML APIs that are available and have always been available to manipulate and support the pieces that are there. I, I can go deeper into any element of that, Kareem. I'm just not sure where you want to kind of dive in in the time we've got today. I mean, this is a great overview, Hank. Uh, um, this is what I was looking for when you say, just to follow up, when you say templating, you're basically dynamically building that Jinja 2 templating and giving it to CML? Yeah, kind of. So it, it was one of the kind of the more challenging aspects I had to do. So what do we, if we look at what, what did we get from CCNA Mentor? So if we zoom in here, you've got a scenario, you've got two switches, switch A and switch B. You need to configure ether channel using two ethernet links says use ports ethernet 01 and 0 or 00 and 01 right so there's a natural language description of what this network looks like and so i mm -hmm. that had to be turned into something that could actually be turned into a structured data model that cml can use and so i used 
Gen AI to process this description and turn that into kind of a structured output, a representation of what a network looks like. Okay, there's two switches. Those switches have these interfaces. Those interfaces are connected, right? So it, I had to I had to write some code to use AI to turn a natural language description of a network into something that I could actually work with. And then once I had that kind of rough structured of what the network looks like, then I use kind of traditional Jinja2 templates that I created to process that structured description of the network into the final CML YAML file that then gets uploaded and imported into CML. How do you do the validation of the actual structure before it gets sent to CML? Oh, great question. So in the prototype, there's a few things that are done. Um, the backend code has some some guardrails that are put on it that says, okay, um, these are these are appropriate types of nodes or devices. These are the, these are interfaces that are appropriate for what we're trying to do. So that's kind of built into the the upfront descriptions that are generated by the lab. Okay. And then the other side of it is um, my my percentage of success has gone up over over the the development process. Um, but about ten to fifteen percent of these scenarios don't generate a lab mm. because something didn't process correctly. So when when the bot tried to upload that into CML, it came back and said there was something invalid, right? The YAML that was generated had incorrect link names or it duplicated a link in some place. So it's I, I'm I'm at about 85% success rate with converting a natural language description like this into a CML YAML file. We've gotten lucky on our chats, right? Uh, peek behind <laughs> the curtain for the snackers. We haven't edited out any breaks. Um, but about 15% of the time, right, I'll get something that just doesn't process right. Um, something I've been talking with the CML team as we we investigate how this type of a feature set could actually be baked directly into CML is providing APIs for validation so that we could set I could send up and make queries and kind of pre-validate things along the way um, uh, on that. But those are some feature sets that we're looking at to try to take some of these AI capabilities and start to embed them directly into CML. So you're upping your you're upping your percentage of success by setting up guardrails within the backend code that you're that you've set up. Mm -hmm. Do you think? And this is a, 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 I know there's going to be a little supposition here. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. You aren't leveraging any external documentation or any external in, um, uh, data source for RAG or anything for this particular tool. Mm -hmm. Do you think that if you were given the capability of adding in an external data source, something that um, can potentially be used to validate um, the the inputs that that might also be a solution then for you know for those people that are thinking that for these kinds of, of of building activities is that another route to success or are there limitations that you've seen that have maybe thought well if we go do this um, API update on the service side then I can put the validation in my code and be more direct about it rather than letting the the model in conjunction with RAG make the decisions? Yeah, I mean, great question. The short answer is yes, there's definitely all sorts of potential enhancements. And I can tell you that we've been looking at um, other ways to kind of deliver the same type of natural language capability into building labs on top of CML that are there that are investigating a handful of different options. RAG is one. Um, direct API manipulation and, and is another one that's being investigated. So mm -hmm. what we've done here, what I've what I've tried to show here is a is a vision of a use case that is possible. And then now that we're gonna we're starting to move from prototype into more like production level deployments, we're investigating ways to kind of increase the reliability, increase the the uh, the potential performance and, and support capabilities there. So the final version of this, when it comes out, either as part of Cisco U or part of CML. Um, likely the implementation will be significantly different from what I have here, but the goal is to have the end state be still this this type of an interaction for users. This is great, Hank. I think um, it, it does a couple of things. It, it showcases how powerful uh, AI assistance could be in your learning journey, um, just at a kind of surface level as a user. Mm -hmm. And it also showcases the, the knowledge of um, and the skills that we have acquired from learning automation and programmability with networking, how we can apply those in real world use cases here, because the entire backend mm -hmm. is what we've been talking about from an automation perspective at an expert level, right? And so I think there's benefit here from just one, once you're ready and once this is 
out to public, uh, Hank, to basically document all your work here because I know a lot of people are going to be interested in what's under the hood and how you've implemented this. I know myself included, I'd love to be able to go read a, a, a repo with all your work there and, 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 and do something very similar with some of my use cases. So Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm looking forward to being able to take this and turn it it's similar to what we've always done, right? The three of us have been working forever in this space, right? We learn something, we learn how, the wrong way to do it, we figure out the right way to do it, and then we try to help other people with yeah. learning labs and tutorials and blog posts and videos like this. And so I think we're just at the very start of some of this AI journey. And we're going to see tons of stuff come out, not just from me, right, from I'm sure the folks over in DevNet that Matt works with. Kareem, I know you and the advocates and learning have been working in a ton of this space. So there's we're at the forefront of kind of what's going to be possible and how we can bring these things into our own workflows. Yeah, and I, th I think that's the really interesting thing for um, Cisco's customers, Cisco's partners and our audience in general, not just for Cisco U, but for DevNet is um, to help navigate the uncertainty that's kind of hurt, uh, happening in the space. Mm -hmm. I think what this video does and kind of the details that we talked about today, Hank, really show that um, like collectively as an industry, we're still trying to figure out the best ways to use Gen AI tooling, um, the trust level that we can put into the the tools themselves and uh, really understanding and, and helping our audience navigate those uncertainties as we move towards, you know, from 50% uh, good good answers to 85% good answers to, you know, a point where we're pretty confident that that the things that we're getting back are, are the right answer. So, um, you know, obviously this also shows us that there are humans in the loop, which is, uh, I think, still heartening for everybody, um, but that we can be more proactive and more efficient in not just our learning, but our productivity as well. And so it is an exciting time, but to your point, Hank, we were at the very beginning of it as far as I'm concerned. Oh. Totally agree. Yeah. Um, Hank, unfortunately, I think we're at, at time. Um, I think this is a really interesting conversation. Uh, it, the, I'm really excited to see the evolution of this bot and how it, how it goes. So, uh, you know, I, we can't wait for you to, to come back and tell us more, um, especially when it's available to the community. So sorry, <laughs> sorry, snackers. Uh, it's not it's not ready yet, according to or uh, based on uh, Kareem's mention earlier. Uh, but it is something that uh, Kareem and Hank and team are working on uh, to, to bring to you. And uh, hopefully we'll see it in, in publicly available in the future. But it, it does get the conversation started really nicely. So thanks for that, Hank. Awesome. Well, thank you both for having me back. I do appreciate it. You're always welcome. Thank you, Hank. And thank you, Snackers, uh, for watching our episode.